So wills have these common elements. Every will has it. You've got an executor or a personal representative. You've got some planning for the spouse, but maybe not very good planning because it's an outright gift or something like that. You may have some planning for the beneficiaries, but clearly you'll always have guardians. But have you thought about all the issues that arise with guardians, by the way? And it'll have some administrative provisions. The executor's job, this is what probate is, is to produce a will before the court. It has to be an original will. Very rarely will they accept a copy of the will. And if they do, it's usually with attestation from witnesses who, have, who you have to produce. That's not something you want to go through, believe me. We, we handle some of those cases. Uh, the executor's job is to notify creditors of potential claims. So there's a publication requirement in virtually every state. In D.C., it's horrific. You have to publish in major newspapers. It costs a fortune to do it. And you have to do this if you have only a will. Again, I'm trying to lead you to the logical conclusion that a revocable trust makes more sense than just having a will, because if the assets are in the trust, you don't have to follow these rules. So you're publishing, you have to file inventories. In Virginia, we have a probate tax that's imposed on the uh, creation of the probate estate on all probate assets, approximately 1% of the value of the probate assets. You file an inventory later, and you may have to increase the probate tax. You don't get refunds easily from the commissioners of accounts. And then you have to file accountings with the commissioner of accounts, which have to be accurate to the penny. And they have to be supported by canceled checks, invoices, and statements. The accountings that we submit for our clients we typically are doing accountings for clients of other lawyers who prepared wills for the clients. They're usually like this thing, because there's so much backup that has to be submitted to the commissioner of accounts. We, of course, have paralegals who charge for all that. And then the commissioner of accounts charges a fee to audit this. When all is said and done, you're looking at an expense ratio of anywhere from 2 to 8%, on average around 5% of it. State. What a waste of money. Unless probate is important and is helpful if you don't have people that you trust to serve in a fiduciary capacity after you're gone. So we have lots of clients who either have family members that are a bunch of no good nicks. We do. Or we have a situation where the, the person doesn't have family alive to help them. So probate may be important, but in most cases, it's not. The traditional planning in a will is not very good for a spouse. I've already talked about that. And planning for distribution to beneficiaries, we often see this 25-30-35 distribution mandate. It's just not the right way, I believe, in today's world to handle this. Particularly, it's harder for our kids to make a living as adults than it is for, has been for us and for prior generations. It's getting harder. The, it's a global economy. There are jobs that are technical. Those that have real technical capability will be able to get those jobs and keep them. But it, there's a shift going on in our economy. I don't know if you're noticing it. You know, the world is flat, as Thomas Friedman says. And jobs are being shifted overseas for stuff that normally had been done in the United States. We all have to be right-brained, creative thinkers to uh, help our clients, help ourselves. The administrative provisions you know, talk about a lot of different things, but the main thing is that if you go through probate, you're incurring costs, and why do that? So I have concerns about will-based planning. My number one concern is planning for incapacity or disability. So as Jeff Porter said, disability insurance is important, but that's not the only way to handle disability, because even if you get the money, if you're not capable of managing it, what is the person who is designated to management to do? What do you want to have them do? Do you want to have them make gifts? How do you want to deal with disability? 
How do we plan for the surviving spouse? Who is going to be the trustee? These are all things that I've mentioned earlier. How do we preserve the assets for our client's children, not the children of somebody else? How do we avoid making everything public and making it available for scrutiny by creditors, but also creditors? Anybody can go down to the courthouse and view these inventories and accountings. I can do it online. And I do. We use it as a due diligence tool. 